we started hearing uh, college students that we were speaking to tell us about it and saying, you guys should really need to do crowdfunding. You know, people would say to us, you've got just the kind of, of project that could really capture the imagination and, you know, it's a solution for climate change and people may really get behind this. So we thought, well, we better give that a shot and see, but you don't know. But they were saying, you know, you gotta be careful what you ask for. Don't ask for too much, you sound greedy. Ask for $100,000, you'll be fine. But then we but, thought, what's that really Yeah, what does $100,000 do? go for where in infrastructure is concerned? We can't hire so. people. We can't hire a team of people with that. We can't purchase a building So Julie says, what is it that you need next? And I said, I need a team of engineers and a place to put them. So we started figuring out salaries and thought, okay, let's, let's ask for a million and see where we go from there. And so that's what we did. Just we had no idea whether we could collect that or get $5,000 and people laugh at us. We had no idea. We wound up doubling it. For me, it was developing connections with people from all over the world, from so many countries. And one of our perks was to make videos for a $100 donation. We made a 30 second video and we stood out there on our parking lot and we talked to people individually. And it just really makes you think, you know, when you're talking to somebody from Australia and then the next minute you're talking to someone from Sweden and Oklahoma. and all over the world and you just get this real sense that overwhelms you of you know we have people we've never met from the corners all the corners yeah. of the world that are taking their hard-earned money and giving it to us to help us we had people email us and say we made a donation our kids brought us our, their piggy banks and said i want solar roads to have this we had one young how old is gordon five five or six and he became obsessed with solar freaking roadways <laughs> His, and <laughs> his mother said we had to limit him to watching it five times a day or he'd just sit there and watch it over and over and over. Yeah, they had to make a solar freaking roadways <laughs> rule for their family only five times a day because he was so obsessed with it. And when you he, get stories like that, you realize how solemn it is and how important it is to make that every penny count and stretch it as far as you can possibly go. As an entrepreneur or just a guy who builds circuits in his garage, the common places you buy electrical parts are DigiKey, Mauser, and Radio Shack, which are convenient. They're all, you can get them all online, but they're kind of, they have a lot of stuff, but not everything. So if I'm building a board, I might get 40% of my parts from DigiKey, another 40% from Mauser, some from Radio Shack, and then I got to hunt and peck for everything else. Uh, we have a rep named Liz from uh, Aero Electronics who came to us and says, I carry all that stuff, let us source it for you and we'll put it together for you and we can do it for cheaper and they do. And that's helped us a lot. Quite a, quite a bit and it's a whole lot easier for me to pick up the phone or just to shoot Liz an email saying she has our bill of materials. So I said I need to build 40 more boards and she'll collect all that stuff and ship it to my circuit board manufacturer in Ohio and I just get the finished boards. That makes my life a whole lot easier and it makes the whole process cheaper. We were using a off-brand RGB LED when they first designed the SR3 panel. And I'm not comfortable with that because I don't know how that's going to behave in five years. And we had just retrofitted our building with Cree LEDs. And she said, which company are you, you comfortable with? I said, well, Cree if they make LEDs, the small kind we need. He says she brought a company rep into us from Cree. And she's brought several company reps in. We're field application engineers where I can get down to the specifics and say, okay, can I do this, 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 and here's what I need. And that's that's a world of information you can't get from Radio Shack or anybody or anyplace else. You can get a lot more funding on Indiegogo than you can asking your parents and your, your friends. And if you're asking just your family and friends, they're going to feel obligated. Whereas people on crowdfunding, they're people who are genuinely drawn to it. They saw it, they felt drawn to it, and they want to help you. They're not being pressured to do so, like maybe your cousin or something. Mm -hmm.